Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white flicker deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The goal is to flicker some of our creatures that have nice enter battlefield abilities using the adventure from Twining Twins, Swiss Spiral for one and a white, exiles target a non-token creature and returns it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So this can re-enable ETB effects, but it's also very nice alongside our prototype creatures Steel Seraph and Combat Thresher. We can play these for three mana in the case of Thresher, get a 1-1 double strike that draws a card when it enters, and then if we were to flicker it using our adventure here, then it comes back as a 3-3 double strike, once again drawing a card, and the same is true for Steel Seraph, a 3-3 flyer that can gain various abilities at the beginning of combat, and then now we'll get a 5-4 instead. Then we also have Ether Channeler, which can either make a 1-1 bird with flying, bounce an opposing non-land permanent or draw card when it enters, and then at 2 mana we've got the full set of Spirited Companion, a 1-1 creature that draws a card when it enters. And then at 5 mana I'm also playing 2 copies of Elish Norn, which can double up on all those ETB effects while shutting down the opponent, especially effective at countering opposing copies of Leyline Binding or Ossification. And speaking of Ossification, got 4 of those in the deck as well, and Elish Norn can also double up these triggers to exile 2 opposing creatures and or Planeswalkers. And then another new card from Wilds of Eldraine is Virtue of Knowledge, which can be played as a 5 mana enchantment that doubles our ETB effect, so very similar to Elish Norn. While it doesn't shut down opposing effects, as an enchantment it's a bit harder for the opponent to interact with as opposed to a creature. And then it also comes with an adventure, a 2 mana instant, Vantress, Vision, copies target activated or triggered ability, and we may choose new targets for the copy. So this can also potentially double up on our various effects, including our fetch lands, Obscura Storefront and Broker's Hideout, can find either a plains or an island while gaining one life. Now it is very important that we select the right trigger to copy with the Vantress vision, since the hideout will essentially generate two triggers, one when it first enters a battlefield, and that will generate a trigger letting us search for land, and then if we copy that trigger with the Vantress vision, we essentially get to find an extra land, turning our two mana instant into a ramp spell. Now we can only play it starting turn three, so it's not a two mana rampant growth, but it's still pretty neat that we can pull it off in this blue-white deck. And then uh, rounding out the deck, we've got two copies of Extraordinary Journey, which is a pretty versatile card. Can use it as a bounce spell for opposing creatures. When the opponent goes to replay them, we draw a card. And it also applies to our adventures. So if we play Journey early on and then play a Twining Twins from Exile, we also get to draw a card. And we also get to draw a card if we flicker any of our creatures, either using our two-man adventure or potentially the channel ability on Touch the Spirit Realm can also work. And can also play this as a three-man enchantment, which can also double up its triggers with an Elish Norn or a Virtue of Knowledge in play to exile multiple artifacts or creatures. And then we also have one copy of the Eternal Wonder, which can also flicker our creatures using the plus one ability, can also generate 2-2 two -two double striking samurai, or can be a pseudo board wipe with a minus four. And then we also have a bit of cheap removal here with two copies of Elspeth's Smite, especially useful against a mono red aggro decks, where having some cheap interaction is very much necessary. And then a Steel Seraph turning into a 5-4 lifelinker potentially can also help out in that matchup. And then our mana base has the four fetch lands, a couple more dual lands here to fix our colors, and then the channel lands offering a bit more interaction as well, and then plenty of basics so we can enable ossification and the fetch lands help there as well, and then one roadside reliquary can be an extra mana sink since we have both artifacts and enchantments, so there's a chance we can draw two cards with it as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Ossification into potentially Channeler. Opponents, blue whites, soldiers perhaps. Playing the list from worlds. There's definitely scarier targets than veteran, but her opponent likely has something to flash in end of turn. No reinforcements. So yeah, opponent can find a, a ranger captain next to Convoke and get ahead. Wedding announcement also quite good. Just gonna try to play Steel Seraph as a blocker. Next turn we can double spell Channeler plus Might. Bones attacking. So this implies Iganjo to kill Steel Seraph. If they use Iganjo here, 
I wouldn't be too upset, even though it's nice to have the Steel Seraph going. And then I should probably block the token in case they're just planning to pick up their own creature. And there's that Ganjo. Draw with announcements. And the plan now, Channeler could bounce a token, which is about to get pumped. And keep up Smite. And then Smite's a decent answer to the Veteran, since it will exile it. Another wedding announcement. Opponent only sending in the reinforcements now to make more tokens. Do I care to smite it? Yeah, it's eventually gonna grow bigger. It's a good use of my mana. There's nothing I really wanna exile with Ossification. Okay, now we can just play our Virtue of Knowledge for 5. Could also copy the ability from Channeler and bounce two tokens essentially, and then play Virtue afterwards. Although if I play it now, it should resolve. I don't think her opponent has any way of interacting with it other than uh, Soaring City to bounce it, perhaps. And then next turn with Channeler we get to kind of go off with Virtue, also Vacation exiles two things. I think that's worth it. And just hang back. And then we're happy to trade. Opponent will draw. And they're keeping up counter spells. Elish Norn is unlikely to resolve here. If I go for a Channeler, they can still counter unless we pay four by sacking a token with a Make Disappear. So Ossification is the only card I can sort of guarantee that it resolves. How bad is it if Elish Norn gets countered? It is bad if our opponent has another flash creature they can add to the board, a reinforcements for instance, then we would be very far behind. Maybe start with Channeler, see if they want to counter that, and at least they'll have to sack a token. And then I can maybe end up uh, casting the Ossification. Right, that resolves. In that case, I'll definitely draw, and then maybe bounce one token. Okay, found a land, so no point in using Ossification now. Could still sack a Reliquary to draw. Opponent did have another Reinforcements. I will trade. Keep the token in play, which is better to bounce or exile. Third so point's got a full grip. Another ossification. Can keep the board clear. So step one, Elishnorn. Make them cast make disappear with casualty, and then we can ossification. Right, this is probably not resolving. It is? Okay. Not sure what they're holding here. A bodyguard doesn't trigger because of Elish Norn, so just a 4-4. And another wedding announcement. Kind of hoping they tap out for another creature so we can exile three. And they do. And a frontliner as well. Doesn't gain life with Veteran now with Elish Norn in play. Found Channeler. Perfect. And this is certainly going to draw. Find our twins, can flicker channeler to draw three more, or play companion. Got a ton of options. Maybe go companion plus ossification this turn. I 
Exile Bodyguard, Veteran, and a token perhaps, and our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, Eelishnorn finally taking over here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands got double smite so against aggro. We've got some useful tools. Although I will be taking one damage repeatedly from my Adarkar Wastes. Yeah, this might still be good enough with how popular Monored Aggro is. And yeah, there we see turn 1 Swiss Spear. Hoping 3 damage is enough to take it out. May not be. Alright, Felden. Yeah, smiting Felden doesn't feel great since we deal damage to it. But it does prevent more damage long term. And our opponent finds Kumano, Phoenix Chick, Adversary. So just gonna pass. Could have played Journey for zero, that way if they play Kumano, I actually draw a card. I think I'd rather keep up Smite. And there's Adversary, so I can Smite the Swiss Spear. which is somewhat likely to deal more damage next turn, since Channeler also blocks Adversary a bit better as a 2-1 if we decide to draw a card. Thresher. That one we kind of want to flicker with the Twins, although I might just play it as a 4-4 next turn. Definitely trading if I get the chance. I do not. Although at least I have to use a lightning strike for that. And another adversary. That one's a 3-3. Yeah, playing a 4-4 twins is probably the move. And then I don't think I'm channeling Iganjo. Hopefully this can stabilize us. We're at 4. That to double burn spell. Also vacation. Don't really want to deal myself one damage with a darker waste if I can help it. So in that case, play Thresher, see what I draw. At least Thresher trades for one of their creatures. Something like this. Could still play Journey for 0 as well, but it's unlikely to be very relevant. Yeah, I guess I'll play it here. Mishra's Foundry. An extra creature threat. And they're gonna start going wide. Soaring City gives us a bit of interaction. So the twins can attack. And then maybe go for a companion. Hope to draw a white source so I can play another one. I guess we'll start here. With a blue land I can keep up Soaring City as well. Alright, this gains one life, so now I can maybe tap my wastes for white. Attack with the twins. And then... Is it ossification or is it another companion here? Companion might be alright if our opponent's got an end the festivities. I imagine they would have cast it last turn already. Alright, another journey I might end up uh, casting next turn. Opponent attacks, reconsiders. And a Thresher. So we could journey, although I don't want to bounce Adversary, have them replay it, and then get back a Lightning Strike. Uh, bouncing Etching also lets them replay it and deal one to me. 
So, yeah, not the best creatures to bounce here, but could bounce my own creatures, perhaps. Uh, which I don't hate. So step one, attack with twins. Let's say we cast Journey for X equals one. I could bounce my own Thresher, play it, and draw three cards total. That's somewhat reasonable. Could also attack with Thresher, see if they take it. And if it trades, we're not too upset. Opponent takes it. Okay, and then played for three mana, which will draw three cards. Let's see if we're dead. Opponent animates Foundry. So if they have a monstrous rage, we're in trouble either way. Trades are successful. Lightning strike us to one. Okay. So store front up to two, can attack with the twins. Play Wanderer to flicker my own twins, which will draw two cards. Doesn't seem super relevant. Might as well play a 7 mana Thresher at that point. So I'm not dead to a Kumano anymore. Still dead to lots of burn spells, so we'll see here. Chandra puts me to one. Don't think a fancy dress means I didn't come here to find Squee on top. Just improvise. So is this the most epic slow roll ever, or did we get there? Yeah, if it weren't for the life gain from Storefront, we would have been dead to Chandra. GG's. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a close one here against Monorad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. I think I'm actually gonna hold storefront to ramp with our adventure here. And then turn to companion. Find a Steel Seraph. Also tempting to play next turn. We'll see what our opponent does. Blue-white. So we'll hit for one. I guess if they counter the instant speed half of the card, then I'm also not going to get to cast a 5-mana enchantment, so that would be kind of disappointing. Although Seacrum Coast points more towards an aggressive deck than control. So I don't know if they would necessarily have many counter spells. And uh, yeah, this is not a play I get to make very often, so kind of want to give it a shot. So this one we don't want to copy yet, want to wait for the next trigger. And this one we want to copy. Does it resolve? Would potentially give us access to 5 mana next turn. So we can play Thresher, flicker it with twins, make a 3-3 double strike. Ah, opponent's gonna negate it. Boo. Alright, I'll get my one land then. Blast soon. And what's next? Nothing. So we'll hit for one, play Thresher. Gonna slow plate a little bit here. 
And then next turn we'll have more options with our Swiss Spiral Adventure. Can be helpful to play around a sweeper or against removal. Points go to Thirst for Knowledge, points towards a combo deck here. Trying to reanimate some card from the graveyard perhaps. Just discarding Faithful Mending and a land. Celestis is next. Okay, so play Seraph, making sure to keep up white mana. And then we can go for either Vigilance or Lifelink. If our opponent has a Wandering Emperor to exile it, we'll flicker in response, which is good value. If they have a Sweeper, we can also flicker one of our creatures and get it back end of turn. Yep, perfect. And I think Thresher makes sense, get a 3-3 double strike, that's the most pressure, and we also get to draw a card if this happens. If they have another counterspell, I'll be sad. Alright, that worked. So it does not seem like the matchup for Elspeth's Smite. Another Twins I'll take. And a Journey. Okay, so... Attack for 6, and then I could play Journey x equals 0 and play the Twins to draw another card. Or we could play Twins keep up the adventure to play around another Sweeper. Which is also good value. Put on somewhat likely to have another Sweeper, so I think I like Twins keep up Twins. Could have tapped a bit better, but that's fine. Life total is not going to be all that relevant this game. And yeah, another depopulate, same as last turn. That works. All right, we'll run it back. Now I could play a three mana Thresher and keep up twins and play a journey for zero, which I don't hate. another Thresher and another Twins in the chamber. Opponent flashes back Mending, so they're at 5, still dead on board, so they need to do something here. But we might see something powerful discarded, maybe a Portal to Phyrexia. No, just uh, Silver Scrutiny, so maybe more of a traditional control deck. Well, third time's the charm, our opponent says, but uh, is there a reason to flicker one over the other? I guess Wandering Emperor could exile the tapped one. So I'll flicker the 1-1. One, one. And that will also draw a card with Journey. So you draw two. And this is still a lethal attack, potentially. Can play Twins, draw a card with Journey. Alright, points go to Nyganjo this time. Fair enough, maybe should have played Twins in case we found another flicker effect here. Journey only triggers once each turn, so I don't really want to play the other Twins if I can help it. Um, can play Storefront, play another Journey for zero. Although I guess we don't have enough blue mana since we tapped weirdly. Yeah, the Auto Tapper and Pain Lands is not a good combination. That's fine, we'll pass. Can get the opponent to one here. Celestus gonna draw and discard. Discarding Mindbreaker, I see, so it's a mill deck. 
We have not seen Jace yet, but that could maybe close out the game after they mill us here. If I double smite, I guess I don't take six, but they still get to mill us either way. So 18 cards left. So if Jace mills me for 15, we're not dead yet. So I want to be careful not to draw too many cards. Opponent going through our library. And Ether Channeler could bounce Celestus. 17 cards left, so I put my opponent to 2. So I think we start by playing the Twins, see what we pick up. So we'll attack for 4. Play Channeler to bound Celestus. And then we shouldn't beat that to Jace. Alright, let's see what happens. Faithful Mending, draw two, discard two, back up to four life. A sweeper can buy them more time, but we've also seen our fair share of depopulates already. And yeah, there's Jace, so mill us for 15, would have one card left, decides to mill for three instead. And draw three, so if they have another Jace, I guess we're dead. Wow, they actually had it. Well, that was a pretty lucky combo. GG's. Mill for 15, and now we're dead. Did not play around double Jace, but not much we could do about it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn two, we have Ossification available. Turn three, Seraph. Turn four, I could flicker it to make it a 5 4 if I want to. Although we could also just play the Twins up against what could be a five-color domain strategy. So those are pretty scary. Keep my channeler until after we play Elishnorn, perhaps. Still dies to a virtue of persistence. I find another Twins. So now I'm more into the idea of uh, playing a 4-4. If our opponent tried to kill Seraph in our turn, then we also could have flickered it in response to make it into a 5-4 after all. And our opponent had to go for the throat, which does not work on artifact creatures, but they can still pay the ward here. Okay, find another Twins, so probably same as last turn, just play the Twins after attacking. And is it going to be another go for the throat? Nope, herd migration this time. Could see Sunfall clear the board. This might be an invasion of Alara deck. With go for the throat as only author two drop. Yep. All right, let's spin the wheel here. Opponent gets to fetch quests, and then we'll have to wait and see what they find. They've got some good ones. Flash Gorger. We can use Ossification to remove. They might go for Virtue. And then we could use Channeler to get rid of the enchantment, make them replay it for 7. Um, sadly, don't have a land to then also flicker my creature if they used a 2-mana sorcery. This can only exile artifacts or creatures. So yeah, I think we don't want them getting back Flash Gorger for free. So I'm going to have to bounce it. I 
Hit them for seven. And we'll see if they have another invasion. Desecrator would also be quite effective here. Yep. They've got a seven drop to exile, so they can transform Invasion of Alara, copy Desecrator, kill two of my creatures. I guess we have Ward at least, so they can kill the twins. But uh, they can also blow up a land here if they want to. So, it's not looking good. If we had been able to play Elish Norn, then we could have stopped the Desecrator from triggering. So all our hopes and dreams riding on this 4-4 Twining Twins. Okay, we can now play Elish Norn. And then turn after we can double ossification, hopefully. They might have a Leyline Binding in hand for Elish Norn, but that doesn't work since we stopped the ETB effect. So I'm not sure if they have many other answers, given that they've already played Go for the Throat. And they probably only have the one copy. It's gonna be a Lookout. Yep, that can deal 6 damage here. So not enough to kill Elish Norn. So they can finish it off with Virtue of Persistence, I guess. Yep. Take 11. Alright, so now we're in trouble since our opponent probably now has access to their uh, Leyline Bindings again. Now I can go face with the Twins. I can flicker the token to essentially kill it and play another Twins. That's probably the move. And let them keep Luca. I guess it's non-token, never mind. I guess we'll just play it in ossification then. I guess this is still worse if they have Leyline Binding, since then they get back the uh, Desecrator instead of just exiling the token. But we do have two lethal threats. We'll look out pluses for mana. Cycle's headquarters, so they're digging. Cycle again, so I think we're in the clear. Also could have used a channel on Touch the Spirit Realm to get rid of the token instead and then keep ossification. That was maybe the ideal play. They've got one Leyline Binding, they can pay for Ward, but the second Twins is still gonna get him. Well, this was an incredibly close game. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, our hand seems fine. Opponent on green-white with veteran. So we're looking at turn 2 companion, turn 3 channeler potentially bouncing something. Could also go for Steel Seraph. I see Broker's Ascendancy, potentially a Super Friends Planeswalker style of deck. Yeah, could go with Steel Seraph, could play Channeler, bounce the enchantment back. But uh, for now, getting a flyer out there seems useful if we need to pressure a Planeswalker. Veteran kind of implies more of a token strategy. But 
Tentacle Brawler also has good plus one counter synergy here. And our opponent keeps up two mana. Okay, could be all sorts of things. For now, Steel Seraph can fly Companion or could lifelink itself. And then I could still play Companion, keep up the adventure. Or we could play Channeler to bounce something. I guess we could also jump with Companion and then flicker it. Doesn't work against Trample, but can soak up three from Veteran. So in that case, going a Life Link is pretty good. Yeah, let's just play Companion and then hang on to the Spiral. Could also also vacation the Brawler now. It's not a bad use of our mana. Although it's possible our opponent's got a protection spell in hand here for two mana. Let's pass. Could also flicker my own Seraph to upgrade it into a 5-4. Would work out if our opponent tries to remove it. Tamio. So if they try and lock down Steel Seraph, that seems like a very appealing play. Need to make sure I cast it before the end step so we actually get it back in time. No blocks. Time goes up to 5 loyalty, but we've got a 5 powered Steel Seraph now. And then Channeler could bounce Brawler back to reset it. Or we can exile it with Ossification. And then bounce maybe the Ascendancy or the Veteran. Let's go with the Ascendancy. And then do we care more about gaining 5 or dealing 1 damage? Could see the life gain coming in handy. Vigilance also reasonable if we want to play around Wandering Emperor, which our opponent somewhat likely to have in their deck. Opponent replays Ascendancy. Ooh, nice Extraordinary Journey. Want to play that before playing Twins to get more value. And can play it for x equals 2 here. Does seem like they have a counter. Negate. Fair enough. Yeah, now we're getting to the point where I should play around on Emperor. With her opponent at 15, unlikely to have a 2 turn clock if I give Channel or Flying. Renan 7 is pretty good. Can make a large reaching tree folk, although a channeler can bounce it. And then now we want to finish off a Renan 7. Play twins. Looks good. So if we fly channeler can send that and two companions at Renan 7 while Seraph goes face. Bones at 6. Alright, hope to dodge a sweeper pretty much. Resplendence. Can minus. And what does it find? Brawler does not fly. Points at 7, so they seem dead on board. Alright, sweet. Interesting game here against a banned Planeswalker deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Storefront gets Island. Turn 2 Companion, turn 3 Thresher. And we'll see what we're up against here. Turn 1 Swiss Spear, a red aggro. Okay. 
Turn 1 Smite would have worked out a bit better. Could keep it up right now. Which is maybe worth it. Just hope they don't enable Prowess twice. And if they do, I guess we could play Companion, keep up Smite again next turn. It's gonna be a charming Scoundrel. So if that puts Counter on itself, we'll take that out instead. Not quite a counter, just a wicked roll. So it deals one on the way out. Play Thresher, and then next turn we could potentially flicker it and play Companion, have a 3-3 double strike. Find another smite. Okay, so we've got some decent tools for the matchup here. Hope Thresher survives. Alright, it looks like that's toast with a frenzy. At least it didn't add any other creatures to the board. Could also go channel or draw card, keep up smites. Which I don't mind here. Since their opponent's unlikely to want to kill companion, if I block and then flicker to soak up the damage and they kill companion in response, I also lose the twins. Could have also played twins as a 4-4. Her opponent has something like Squee, getting to exile it with Smite is also quite nice. It's gonna be Devastator for three. Yeah, still dies to our one mana Smite. Thresher's next. Yeah, I really want to make this happen. Hopefully we find an untapped land. Alright, just another channeler. Yeah, might actually want to start attacking. We're still up against Monoret, so I'll respect them. Keep back Channeler. And then next turn, maybe Flicker on Thresher, we'll see. Swiss Spear attacks. Probably have to take it here. All right, another Frenzy, they don't want us to have Thresher, that much is clear. Take two. At least our opponent's down to two cards in hand. One card in hand. We are at 10. Elish Norn still without a 5th mana. What's the plan? Probably Companion draw, and then we can still Flicker Channeler at the very least. Or I can just play Companion, hope to finally get a 5th land for Elish Norn, and that can stabilize us very nicely. Let's do that instead. Alright, finally. So Foundry gets in, and then could triple block Foundry to play around another Monstrous Rage, which would get it up to 3-4 Toughness, and if they don't have it they only kill one companion for free basically. If I triple block Swiss Spear what happens? If they have a burn spell they kill one creature, trample over, that's not as good. I kind of like the triple block here. Alright, so time for Elish Norn, or do we play Eternal Wanderer? We want to try and close out the game as quickly as possible while not taking any more damage from the Swiss Spear. If I play Elish Norn and our opponent attacks, could imply another Frenzy, but I think Elish Norn is still pretty safe to block here. Also have to watch out for another Devastator flying over here, with her opponent having 5 mana. But yeah, I think Elish Norn is gonna lead to the fastest win, since it'll double all our card draw. And Lightning Strike goes face. Alright, we're at 5. Thresher draws 2 cards. And then I can flicker it with the Twins, make a 3-3 double strike at long last. And a bit of life gain is always appreciated. So I'll do this now. We only gain one life here, even with Elish Norn in play with our fetch land, sadly. And draw two more. And a Virtue of Knowledge is going to be nice too. Kumano puts this to 5, and our opponent explodes, they're just too far behind here. Awesome! 
All right, so we get to see our blue-white flicker deck in action, and this seems like a nice upgrade for the mono-white Elish Norn deck that I played before. The uh, twins giving us a cheap flicker effect stapled onto a 4-4 flyer is great, and then now with Virtue of Knowledge we've got another Elish Norn effect that's a bit harder for most decks to interact with. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.